most of us, of course, live um, in a, a secular context in families or as, as, uh, as individuals, and we are constantly um, surrounded by the, the pressures, the, the, requ the requests of consumerism and the, the media complex that reinforces mm -hmm. that culture. I just want to, I, I want to read a, a, a quote from uh, Saul Alinsky just to get into a, 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 a another direction in the discussion. He says, most people are eagerly groping for some medium, some way in which they can bridge the gap between their morals and their practices. It's often noted in public opinion surveys uh, around environmental themes that people aspire to do the right thing, to walk the talk, mm -hmm. um, but in practice uh, it's 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 uh, it's often very difficult. Maybe the choice isn't there, or there's a there's, there's simply uh, a gap between uh, what we aspire to do and our ability to embody uh, our beliefs and even and, and knowledge. I'd like you to maybe talk about the way in which your tradition attaches great importance to uh, the body uh, embodying a belief system and not simply um, uh, internalizing concepts and ideas. Mm. Mm. Indeed. I mean, as the, as the quote you said alluded to, now we're at a place where the majority of us think this is a worthwhile thing to do, this is an appropriate thing to do, that is, living in a way that we reduce our carbon footprint, that we impact global warming less, and in fact, hopefully at some point manage to reverse it. Yes, and how do we get to a point where we do that with enthusiasm, with ease, um, possibly even without regarding it as a sacrifice, but as a way that actually uh, aligns uh, uh, our aspirations for our, our lives uh, um, in a positive uh, fashion, you know, that we're caring for ourselves and the world rather than having to trade off. I wonder. See, I, personally, I wonder, I know this may be a provocative and even intimidating thought, I wonder if the initial transformation, if the initial shift can be done with ease. You know, if, if it, because often transitions, the status quo has within it a certain familiarity, a, a, a certain resonance with our ha habits. And when we transition, we have to challenge those habits. We have to look deeply and insightfully to see what of the status quo is really in our best interest, personally and collectively. So I think this, what we're asked of now is a radical honesty. What we're asked of now is touching deeply what's important, so deeply that we're willing to bring forth the effort that it requires to shift. What we're asked to do now is to look deeply and ask ourselves, what do we want to leave for our children, our children's children? Or as the Native Americans would say, let's look seven generations ahead. Mm -hmm. what, do we, what is the heritage that we want to leave? The, the primary functioning of Zen, you know, Zen doesn't say, okay, there's an enormous philosophical perspective we have to absorb and understand. Zen says, there's primary simple teachings, be in the moment. The practice of Zen, the process of Zen, of how to discover the capacity to be in the moment, how to translate the intention into the lived activity, this is the process of Zen. Now, this is why we consider it a daily practice on an ongoing basis. Not that we're going to accumulate more knowledge is that we're going to discover how to integrate the intentions, the vows we have, how we're going to integrate them into our being so that they're expressed in relationship to our desires, how they're going to be expressed into a response, a skillful response to our impulses, our habits of behaving in a certain way, that they're going to be the underpinnings for a radical honesty. And, and that we can assume that radical honesty with a sense of benevolence 
and generosity. So maybe it's going to ask things of us that are going to be challenging. We, we have come a long way down a certain road. You know? Maybe we've come further down that road than we would even like to admit to ourselves right now. But this radical honesty says, so be it. We are where we are. Let's acknowledge it and let, it, let us meet it and move forward. So also, there's a sense of courage. Also, there's, a, there's an interesting sense of confidence. You know, we can be such a one. And from a Zen perspective, it's our challenges that ask us to go deep. It's our challenges that help us to discover how to go deep. So in a strange way, our challenges are a gift. Wow. Yeah. And, and that when we can hold this perspective, th then the very notion that, I mean, how can we in the West, in the developed countries, how can we not look at ourselves? We consume most of the products of the world. We burn up most of the energy. We just do. You know? Who's going to have to cut back? It's us. You know? Who's going to have to shift their lifestyle in a way that reduces the impact of that lifestyle upon the environment and, uh, and upon our collective resource? We all. You know? I mean, that's, that's the truth, I think that we're going to have to come to and accommodate and then live in a way that isn't accorded.